Hello everyone, Allie here and welcome to the gold mine. Thank you so much for joining me here on another episode at Allie's Treasure Trove. Today, I do have a new Nendroid unboxing and review. We're going to be checking out Yu-Gi-Oh's Dark Magician Girl, Nendroid number 1596. Now I've had Dark Magician Girl here for a little while, set her actually off to the side in preparation for an unboxing and review episode, and then it just slipped my mind. She got out of my sight, but you know what? She's here today, and we're going to go ahead and check her on out. Now I did pick up Dark Magician Girl a little while ago at Anime Fix. We'll go ahead and put their logo on screen and their website link in the description down below. Local anime store here in Pinellas County, Florida, down on Central Avenue in St. Petersburg. Also does have a shop in the Mall of America, Minnesota as well. So does have a website that you can have orders shipped to you and also can pick up in store as well. I've been been friends with Bobby, the owner, for many, many years. Definitely a great place to shop. But excited to unbox Dark Magician Girl here because she is super cute. So just in the box. I can only imagine how awesome she is out of the box. So does come, looks like, with a little Karibo flute of summoning Karibo. Also looks like one of her spells little pink uh, to go on her rod as a cast effect. So, excited to go ahead and check her on out. Let's go ahead and swap views here by getting in Allie into the corner. Oh no, I'm in my box. Let me out. I can't escape the corner. But all right, so Nendry number 1,596. We're getting quite up there in terms of numbers. Looks like 50th anniversary of Nendroids. So I guess they do a little over 100 per year on average. But see, there's a little Karibo. Flutes. Does have, of course, her ring. Now, we have checked out some other Dark Magician Girl stuff on the channel before. We'll go ahead and actually link a Kurubukia unboxing up there in the top right corner. If you guys can't see it, um, I think I have an Android video, so that won't pop up at the end screen. Bots, of course, can always search for it on the channel, but I know if you guys are on mobile, the, the pop ups don't pop up, but if you're on desktop, it should be there. All right, let's go ahead and open you on up from the bottom. That way, when I look at the box on the shelf, I'm like, oh, it's nice and sealed. Although, of course, you and I both know, you out there watching, and I know, of course, that this has been opened. All right. Excited. I'm excited to check her on out. So we do have the little book on how to change pieces. Does have the stand assembly, how to switch out her face plates. How to, oh, there's one where her knee is bent. Okay, that's cool. It's an extra leg part. So that's the one with the, where she's, she's blasting. All right. And then in English as well. So they do have double-sided inserts here, English and Japanese. I feel like I didn't put this back together properly. There we go. I think it was like that. All right, let's go ahead and slide her on out. So just the pink inserts on the box, nothing, no crazy patterns or anything like that. So we'll move that box behind us here. All right. Do we have any tape to cut? I don't think so. I don't think there's normally tape. Usually you just, just pull the top off here. All right. So here's her staff, her rod. Super cute. My magical girl yet. So she does have the oh, face plates. More of a shocked expression. I know it's aiming for like She's casting a spell, like, intense. But to me, it looks more of, like, a shocked expression. I like this default faceplate. Although, of course, we'll try them out. We'll see what this face looks like on her. But this is just super cute. Just quintessential Dark Magician Girl. And does your hat come off? No, you are sculpted. So you are sculpted. So I do think a portion comes off, as we did see in the, the guide. So, yeah. So this part will come off. But the actual top part does not come off. So I have... I think it's called Kuposh. Kotobukiya was making for a while like their own, not quite a Nendroid, but it looked to compete with Nendroids. I do have the Dark Magician Girl there, and it's a magnet attached on the hat. So if you guys would ever like to see me talk about that here on the channel, let me know in the comments. The Dark Magician Girl, I think, like I said, Kuposh. Uh, let me know down below. That hat is removable, so I was hoping this one would as well, but this is just one part of the sculpt. We can actually see the seam here on this side where the hat splits apart. Would have liked to be able to take the hat off, but not the case here, not the case. All right, so that's a little, I won't say disappointing, because I feel like I should have expected it, but still. Do, 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 do. Okay. So very, very smooth here transition on that. So yeah, I was, I was, I did think that it was a detachable piece because I didn't see the seam, but it's only visible 
on her on her rides or left on this side. All right, so let's let's pull your face off, Miss Magician. Don't mind me, just pulling your face off. So, see what the other faceplate looks like. Let's let's take her apart though. That way we can get all the plastics off, assorted plastics. Her outfit's cute. I mean, we knew her outfit was going to be cute, but it's interesting. How exactly am I supposed to remove this? You look like... All right, you do have... All right, you do have removable pieces on the back. So that's interesting. You can have Dark Magician Girl here without her, her floating sleeves. Interesting. Well endowed Dark Magician Girl. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, do, 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 do. Does your skirt come off as well? It, it looks like it does. Hold on. Do, do, do. I don't see where it would, except maybe on the side. I'm having a hard time looking. Yeah, there's... It pops off on the side. Yes. Okay. So you can see, like, her little leotard underneath. So interesting. I didn't realize Dark Magician Girl's actual costume was in pieces like this. Makes me want to go take a look at her, like, in-anime design. If they do float, like, if she does wear, like, a one-piece or if they're attached. I mean, I know it's made like this in particular so that it's easy to change out the legs and whatnot without breaking any parts. But still interesting to just look at this body piece. Also looks awkward with no head. Also looks awkward with no head. But, all right. So, let's go ahead and make the the casting pose. Let's go ahead and swap the leg. So, here, here is the bent knee. Then also, this to keep it from, like, shrinking or anything like that. The slifer really could have used something to hold the pieces open. So, I didn't have to use a hair dryer to get the parts to fit together. Would have been nice... It would have been nice if there was a little tab to keep it open, but alas, that was not the case. Instead, the instruction guide said, if you're having difficulty assembling Slifer, maybe you should get a hairdryer. And I'm like, bruh. Yeah, that was the last uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! opening we had here on the channel. All right, so. I was expecting to go in more, but it's just loose like that. That is interesting. That is interesting. So that doesn't look great like this for her to be facing backwards, but I guess so you do have to keep it at an angle. I wonder, however, yeah, you can't see that gap once the, the skirt part is on. Okay, so that's more of a moot point. At first I was like, oh, that doesn't look very good, but moot point, moot point. All right, so let's let's skirt up, Dark Magician Girl. Why she quits flashing everybody? Do, do, do. I was like, this is the skirt, right? <laughs> of course, the box is behind me for reference. We do have the other arms as well. Do have some bent arms. Ah, we also have if we want to change. Yeah, okay, I see, I see what's up. So this here, I'm assuming, is for the flute because it's missing the hands. Then if we want her to hold the staff on the other side, we can switch this as a fist. Not going to be switching out the arms except to put the flute on at this moment. But let's go ahead and wand her up. Very happy with the ease of changing pieces. Just a little bit confused. I couldn't see through the plastic to see where the pins were for the top parts and the skirt part. So the bodice parts and the skirt parts earlier, but... It did come off easily and safely. Do you want to take extra care, though, with these smaller pieces? Just because still looks like you could easily break them. So I would just use caution, as you should when handling any kind of collectible. Use caution. All right. And let's swap the faceplate, see what it looks like. I'm still, like I said, partial to the just smiley Dark Magician girl, but curious. See her looking more tough. Put her head together. <laughs> Ch 
She does look cute. She does look more angry rather than shocked once she has her hair. Something about the hair covering up the sides of her face. I don't know why, but she does look now. Now, I wouldn't say shocked anymore. Now she does look angry. She's like ready, ready to get to business. All right, Dark Magician Girl. Come on. Get your head back in there. Please. Dark Magician Girl, please. There we go. There we go. So that is cute. That is cute. She looks, I feel like, I feel like she looks a little too angry. That might be just me though. I'm used to her just being all cute, but you know what? She's, she's got the power too. She's ready to throw down. So definitely cute. Definitely cute. Interesting. I'm not used to seeing Nendroid with just one extra faceplate. Usually we get two different ones, but she does have a lot of accessories. So still absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable. But all right, let's, let's, uh, let's make it some Karibo action. Let's make some Karibo action. So far, so far, really thoroughly enjoying, really loving Dark Magician Girl here. I have no complaints. Which is obviously, of course, always the goal is to have no complaints about anything. Be like, love it, 10 out of 10. So far, we are at that 10 out of 10 range. So curious, hoping that all of the other accessory swaps goes very easily. Let me take off your hands, miss. Do, 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 do. Do a little swapsies on the arm. I know I said we weren't swapping arm pieces, but you gotta try out the flute of summoning Karibo. Of course. That easily just pops in there. Alright. So just from the handling, this has kind of popped out the back. Goes back in easily. Might want to do all of your, your swapping and your posing before putting those pieces back on, but either one works. As long as you're careful with the handling, it all should be fine. That looks cute with the leg posed up. Ooh, that is adorable. That is really adorable. So for the flutes, for the Karibo. So Karibo does look like he has a stand piece. Yeah, so the Karibo will be able to attach and he can float. Oh, they're so cute together. They are super cute together. Super duper cute. Super duper cute. All right. All right. And then this looks like, yes. Okay. So then if we wanted the spell casting, and it is something we didn't do with the assembly earlier, but better late than never. Now you're the flute, right? No, the flute came from here. All right, go back in there. Do, 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 do. All right. Then you just put this back on. Easy swap. Mm, help if I put it in the right side. There we go. All right. And then let's go ahead. We already have the, I know. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do arms. I'm not going to do arms. And yet here we are doing arms. Very thorough review this time around. No, oh, I pulled her whole arm out of the socket. Whoopsies. All right, put on the base arm again. Now I should take this, this back piece off. Now I see more and more why Good Smile had them made separately, just so that way for ease of navigation around the body, just be able to take these pieces off rather than having to move around them at all times. It was good. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. All right. Let's get you with the staff once again. And then we can just swap this arm just because. Which looks like the shoulder's coming out a bit. All right, let's put this other bent arm just to see, just to see. Like I said, we can put the staff in both the standard left arm and then the alternate right arm because it does have the open grip. I do like the leg up pose. I was expecting not to like it initially when we put it in. I saw that gap. I was like, I don't know about that gap, but definitely very, very cute. 
All right, so let's swap staff hands. Do, do, do. All right, maybe this one isn't meant for the staff. Maybe it's not. It's not giving me a good grip here. Let me take a look through the guide once again. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Perhaps it's just meant to be more of a kind of pose, just but it does look like she's mirroring on this side. So that is interesting to see. That is interesting to see. Perhaps if I take the arm out, why did I take out all of it? I don't know. Does actually seem a bit too wide, so that's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, definitely grips on the left side. Not so much on this side. So not sure why she has this open palm here. Was there a pose perhaps in the box that she was holding? Ah, ah, it's to grip the other side of the flute. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so both the arms are for flute holding. Okay, so it doesn't actually grip it, but it's meant so that she can put her arm up so it looks like she's blowing into the flute. Okay, okay, okay. So at first I was disappointed. Now I completely understand. All right. I was going to detract the point. I was going to be like, eh, nine out of 10. But that's just operator error. That's all on me. I didn't realize that's what it was for. Could have been, I feel a little bit more clear in the instruction guide, but everything, everything worked out. So, all right, let's put you back on arms. Adorable. Really digging the foot up pose. Really digging the foot up pose. Then, of course, we need to find her ring. So, where are the other pieces? Where is the ring piece? Where is it? Are you taped inside there? Where is piece J? So, it should be, should be in the package at the bottom. All right, so I think I need to take everything out of here because otherwise they'll all just fall out. I could just let everything fall out. Yeah, goodbye arms, goodbye Karibo. All right, so let me gotta peel some tape. Oh, that's a lot of tape there. We got a less residue tape side. Not necessarily. Let's just use our scissors to cut. I'm still concerned as I am not seeing the piece. I am extra concerned now as I am still not seeing that piece. Okay. Where is our J piece? Parts J is inserted behind the inner package paperboard. Okay. Woo! Woo! All right. Ah, okay. All right, thank goodness. Thank goodness. The instruction guide is also in English. <laughs> ah. All right. So it is very thin. A little bit more thin than I was anticipating. So then this... Ah, this holds it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So definitely be careful with her ring. It is very thin. Very, very wobbly. Okay. It slides in there quite nicely. 
Okay. All right. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. So let's put put you right here. Good sir. And then whoopsies. Whoopsie daisies. This is the ring for the Karibo. Or the stand for the Karibo, rather. Boop. There we go. And then the main here. goes in your back which I cannot see the hole hole is right there small of her back you look a bit thick though hmm All right, it's not meant to go all the way in. Good, because I do not want to force her much further. Or she just pops out because I didn't put it in further enough. I can also take this top bit off, insert. Or I can also work with this another time. I can also work with that another time. I feel like pushing hard on things on camera would be a bit stressful. Let me just, let me just. I think actually life would be easy if I just ripped her head off. Now I think I'm able to put the pressure that I want. Dark Magician Girl, please. All right, so since I am struggling with this, I'm going to say 9 out of 10. I'm just going to say 9 out of 10. Just because having difficulty inserting her into the stand, which I don't feel that I normally do with Nendroids, and also would have liked this to be less flimsy. It is cool. Just did not expect it to be such a, a wobbly material. But let me stop making a mess here this behind we won't look at this area anymore let's get out of this area absolutely adorable lovely accessories then do, 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 do. she is very cute it looks really good i will be assembling her onto the base and taking pictures, you know, forbidding anything goes wrong. I have, and I'm a little bit hesitant to push too hard on this, just because I have actually in the past, I have had incidences, not with Nendroids, but actually with a Figma, where I broke this portion. So I really don't want to push too hard. So that is why I'm deducting a point. You know, everything here is going to have a good score, because if I didn't like it to begin with, I would not have purchased it. So everything's going to be rated very highly. Dark Magician Girl, though, I do feel the need to subtract points just because this is giving me difficulty. Could just be this one in particular. Mainly, mainly because of the flimsiness of this. Like, this looks really cool. Really neat idea. Just wish that it wasn't such... It just feels very cheap. It feels very cheap, and it wobbles. It seems like it keeps trying to slide out. Be nice, maybe, if there's a designated flat part that it was supposed to be held at, so that way it didn't just rotate side to side. But we'll we'll play with it and get it all set up afterwards. Take some nice pictures, put, 
put them up on the collectibles Instagram, which is I've been ignoring for a while. I get into the habit of updating it and then I just miss a few days and then it I don't do it for a few months and then get back into it. But lovely, lovely dark magician girl here. I would say I would say definitely recommend whether you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan or not, just because she is so cute, such an iconic character as well. Dark Magician Girl. Love her. Lovely, lovely paint application. Lovely accessories. Love the flute to Kar summoning Karibo. Love the Karibo. Really, really like it. Makes sense that there's only one extra faceplate since she does have the Karibo accessories. Would have liked another, but I mean, what other expressions does Dark Magician Girl have that would be, that would make sense for a Nendroid? But love it. Love the leg up. You can have her to the side. You can have her towards the front. You can have it just straight back like she's running. But more versatile than I expected. Like I said, I was worried about that gap initially, but her skirt part does cover it. You cannot see it unless you're looking for it. Like, you know, you're you're looking up this way or whatever. But 9 out of 10. Very, very cute. Definitely would recommend to Yu-Gi-Oh fans and even non, like, really hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh fans. Casual Yu-Gi-Oh fans. People that just like Dark Magician Girl. You might not know too much about the show, but you like Dark Magician Girl. This is a great pickup for your collection. She is absolutely adorable. And to my knowledge, just Dark Magician Girl and Yu-Gi. Yu-Gi we have checked out on the channel before. I believe those are the only two Yu-Gi-Oh Nendroids. So I know there's a couple Figmas. There's a Dark Magician Girl Figma. There's the Yugi Figma. And there's a Kaiba Figma. Uh, there are some of the pop-up parades as well. But I think for Nendroids, there really should be a Kaiba Nendroid. But there isn't yet. Who knows what we may be getting throughout the rest of this year and into the future. But let me know your thoughts on this Dark Magician Girl. If you have one, have you had issues getting this to not, not wobble around, move from side to side? Is it just because a tiny fan? Is it just because I'm too heavy-handed? Let me know how you are enjoying your Dark Magician Girl Nendroid. Some tips, tricks for getting her on the stand or anything like that. If you don't have a Dark Magician Girl Nendroid, you're just looking at this one, give me your thoughts. I want to know what you think about this adorable little figure. You might even, you might not even think it's adorable. I mean, hey, that's your opinion. I'd be very shocked to see that comment, but it is possible. Let me know your thoughts on her down in the comment section down below. But yes, rating here, Dark Magician Girl, 9 out of 10. That's my final score. Really love her. Really do recommend her. So, hope that you guys enjoyed this newest unboxing and review here on Allie's Treasure Trove. If you did, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me, like I said, feedback about the Dark Magician Girl, yours, tips, tricks, anything. Go ahead and drop that down below. And of course, if you're not yet part of the Allie's Treasure Trove family, I'd love for you to join us here. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, before I get on out of this video, I do have to give an extra special shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much, you all, for going above and beyond with your supports. I really, truly do appreciate it. Do have 10 gemstone miners, and in Bounty Hunter Breaks, Jack Perez, Keith Mina, Mako, Marcel Mardini, Reese, Stephen Olivo, Stephen Bly, and TJ Christensen. You also do have one crystal collector, Sean F. But thank you so much again, though, to all of my patrons. Whether you're on a tier in which I say your name at the end of every video or not, I really, really, truly do appreciate your above and beyond supports. But with that... That wraps off this video here. I was wearing my Yu-Gi-Oh t-shirt. One of many of my Yu-Gi-Oh t-shirts. I was like, pink Yu-Gi-Oh shirts. Time to open the Dark Magician Girl. I like doing a little bit of a color match here. But yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this opening. I really did. I really love having her in my collection. And of course, we'll be back again in the future with some more cool Yu-Gi-Oh unboxings. I'm hoping for next Tuesday's opening that my Anakin with STAP Deluxe Edition Hot Toy arrives. That should be here sometime this week for me, but of course, until it arrives, I can't guarantee a video about it. Need to make sure it comes in first. So hoping for that for next Tuesday. Hoping to actually get back into some more gameplay, get back to a regular Alley Plays Thursdays this upcoming week. But of course, it all depends on how these next two days pan out for me. So that is our schedule updates. Otherwise, I think that is all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Take care, stay safe, and I hope you all join me next time as we unearth some more treasures here on Allie's Treasure Trove. Bye!